everyone. So the Monday health tip, we're going to be talking about something that's very groundbreaking, actually. They've actually discovered a new organ inside the body. Can you believe that? After all these years of anatomy and physiology, there's something new on the horizon. Well, as you know, it, it takes a, quite a bit of time before um, a, a important knowledge in the healthcare field kind of makes its way to the mainstream before, like your medical doctor, you might hear it on the news. For example, vitamin D is making all the big waves right now, but we knew about it like 10 or 15 years ago sort of thing. So they say it takes anywhere from 12 to 15 years for the information to kind of percolate through the system to finally be expressed to the public. So you're going to get this information about 10 years in advance. So you're going to be hearing about this a lot in the next probably 5 to 10 years. And it's one of the biggest things actually that they found in healthcare for a lot of different reasons. So here are some of the, um, the effects or the, how this, this organ system. So basically an organ is a, collect, a collection of cells in the body that has a certain function. For example, the heart, you know, actually is contracting to pump blood through the body, that kind of thing. So it's, the heart is an organ. So these are some of the effects of this new organ that they found, and I'll tell you what it is. So this is very big news. So this new organ weighs about three to seven pounds, depending on how big you are. It has an impact on improving the immune system of your body, your, your body's immune function. It has a big influence on your brain health, and it actually has a big influence on Alzheimer's and dementia. It has a big influence on your digestion and your gut health. It has a big effect on helping your body detoxify. It has an effect on your body's moods. It can also influence how your body grows or a baby is growing or your growth in general. And it has a massive effect on how well what you eat becomes nutrition for your body. It's actually more important than the food you eat is the effect of this organ has on getting that nutrition into your body and actually converting things you eat into nutrients that you can use. Very important. It has a really big important effect on infant health and when this is out of balance, this organ, it can actually have influences and effects on, on the autism spectrum, which I'll get into in a bit. And also it has a very big influence on controlling blood sugar levels and having an influence on uh, diabetes and, and actually how much bo your body weight or, or, be or, or obesity or being overweight. So that's uh, quite a bit and that's just off the top of my head. I'm sure we could list, I could make another list this big. So what is this big organ we're talking about? So it has a name and this is what we're calling it now. It's called the microbiome. So there's actually 10 times the number of cells in this than there are cells in your whole body. What does that mean? It's actually the bacteria and the different organisms that are the, uh, on the inside of your intestinal tract. So for, for the longest time, that was never really even considered as much of an important thing, but it actually has a massive effect on the health of your body, your moods, your brain function, your immune system function, how your body detoxifies things, your body weight, all of these things are influenced by the health of your microbiome. So that's a very, very important thing. So inside your gut you have parasites, you have viruses, you have these bacteria, and there's a balance of good and bad bacteria inside your, your gut. So ideally you would like eight, eight good to two bad, and there does need to be a bit of a balance. But what happens is when people get their microbiome out of balance, then you start getting much more of the bad bacteria colonizing your intestinal system, and that can cause a great number of drastic problems because it actually has a negative impact on all of these things right here. So for example, they're actually calling the gut your second brain because a lot of the neurotransmitters that they're treating people for, you know, um, mental disorders, they're giving them you know, selective uh, serotonin uh, reuptake inhibitors and all these other kind of things for brain health. Well, your gut is actually the produces most of the chemicals that are actually in your brain. A large majority of them are actually produced in your intestines. And some of the more advanced thinking um, psychologists and psych or sorry psychiatrists are actually treating people with depression by giving them probiotic bacteria that can actually give you a, a sense of well-being are actually produced inside your intestines. So. The nutrition, that's a very big important part. A lot of the food you eat, it actually has to be converted by the bacteria into elements that you will actually absorb. A lot of your B vitamins and a lot of other vitamins and things like fiber and things like that that you eat, they're actually digesting it and producing other um, elements that become nutrition for your body. 
So having your microbiome out of balance, you're actually getting less nutrition from the food that you eat. So the brain health I mentioned before, Alzheimer's and dementia and brain decay, they're actually finding that people that have a microbiome that's out of balance is actually causing um, brain problems. And they're doing some weird things now. It may sound really strange, but it'll be sort of, it sounds pretty bad, but they're actually doing what they call fecal transplants. Um, people that have Alzheimer's and dementia, they're actually taking the probiotic bacteria of somebody who's healthy and putting them into the intestine of somebody who's got these problems. They're actually finding that they're improving drastically in their cognitive function and their brain function by putting good bacteria from a healthy person into their intestines. They call it a fecal transplant. It sounds gross, but it's actually doing some really dr dramatic things. This is probably one of the biggest things that it does, is that it actually helps your body detoxify. We're constantly eating and breathing in and digesting and swallowing things that are full of toxins, you know, heavy metals and all that kind of stuff. When you have a healthy microbiome, it actually filters out about 90, 97 to 98% of the bad stuff because they're actually trapping them before it gets into your system. Even, they even say like even half or up to 50 or 60, 70 percent of the, the volume of your feces is actually these bacteria that have trapped things that don't need to be in your body and it's actually passing it on the way out. So the problem is, if you take something like, how do you destroy the microbiome? Antibiotics is one of the biggest things that destroys this. It totally throws this out of balance. So what happens is you'll start to get more of the bad bacteria, but the detoxification effects goes way down. So they did a study with rats or mice, I don't remember which one it was, but they fed them organic mercury to, healthy, uh, to the healthy subjects, let's say they were mice. Only about 3% of that mercury actually made its way inside of the mice. But when they gave those mice antibiotics, and then they gave them the same amount of mercury, about 97% of the mercury actually made its way into their bodies. So obviously that's going to be making its way to the brain and causing neurological damage and what, what have you. So that, that's why another big thing with if this microbiome is messed up in an infant and then that infant is getting a vaccine or something like that, or they're inhaling things or they're eating things like that, that might be getting into the system and having more of a drastic effect. So the immune function, you, the health of your body, the, the, the health of your uh, intestine, intestinal bacteria actually has a big effect on how healthy your immune system is as well because if it's doing its job, toxins aren't coming into your system. It's preventing things like leaky gut and that kind of thing too. Um, the mood, the growth, what else? Uh, infant health. Oh, another big thing there. When there's, um, if you guys have heard of C. difficile or clostridium, there's different kinds of clostridiums inside the, inside the gut. And when they get out of balance in an infant, sometimes they produce an acid that actually, when, when they inject that acid into, uh, into lab mice, they actually start to um, disassociate themselves from the other mice and they start you know, doing their own thing and rhythmic behaviors and they, they're not social anymore. Kind of very characteristic of an autistic kind of effect. So when there's that, that microbiome has been messed up with an infant, they can actually start to have autistic kind of effects in their body as well. And the body weight is a big one. So here, here we have people. Um, one of the, and another big way, th this actually helps to moderate your body's um, body weight. And it, it helps modify sugars and things that are coming into your system. So it's kind of interesting that one big thing that destroys your microbiome is actually artificial sweeteners. So if you're taking things like aspartame, you're destroying the microbiome and that's actually causing you to gain more weight. So people putting in artificial sweeteners in their coffees and their drinks and whatever else, thinking that's gonna keep them, you know, they're not having any sugar. It actually destroys this, and when you destroy this and put this out of balance, you're much more likely to put weight on, actually. So that's just a bunch of things off the top of my head. I could go on for hours about this, and you'll probably hear about this more and more. <laughs> but, uh, so how do you help the microbiome? Number one, obviously, if you take probiotics, that helps, okay? So obviously we have a good probiotic in the office that we have available for people and it has a, a good number of strains or different types of bacteria. But the truth is, it, 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 it helps, but that's not the big, big picture because there's so, the healthiest people on the planet have a really diverse, a lot of different types of strains of healthy bacteria in their gut, like maybe hundreds of them. So when you take a probiotic, you might be taking five or six or 10 or something like that in them, but in, really there's a really, really, big array. They, they looked at the healthiest people on the planet and they have, they have bacteria that they don't even find in people now. The way our diet is going now, the, the amount of the good bacteria is getting more and more of a narrow type and there's less and less of them. And they, they need a good variety for having a good overall health effect. 
So the best way you can feed all of the bacteria, number one, the probiotic is good, and you should all take that because I take one too. But the best way to actually feed that is to feed that with um, fiber, actually. So having fiber in your diet helps to feed the bacteria in your body because it helps feed all of them. And the big shift in the last little while is to push people to go more towards what we call fermented foods again. So like sauerkraut, kefir, and those kind of things, uh, tempeh, miso, the, the kind of thing, natto. Things that have been fermented have a really big effect on helping reestablish the microbiome inside your body. I was never, I would, you know, I, I've heard about this kefir and I've known about it for a, a good number of good number of years, but I never tried it because they said it was sour and all that. But I finally took the jump and I had some recently, <laughs> so it actually wasn't as bad as I thought. And uh, it's pretty. I got I got the one without any sugar in it because I know that they'll, they'll sweeten them and they'll put sugar inside it and make it flavored like strawberry or something like that. But obviously, you just want to get the plain one that doesn't have anything in it. But I can just easily add that to my shakes and whatever, and I've done that before, and it's actually quite fine. It's no problem. So my next step is to try the sauerkraut, which I never really liked when I was a kid, but we'll see how that goes. So I've got to try more and more fermented foods in my diet as well because I know it's a very important thing to get the whole probiotic picture back in order. So if you've ever taken antibiotics, you really need to do this. So get your probiotics in you as much as you can and start feeding it with good fiber, with the good plant sources and those kind of things. And um, in the next video, next week, I'm actually going to talk about how children are born and that's the biggest thing that affects this. So the birth process is the number one thing that can affect how this will be developed in your body as you get older. So next week's video we're going to be talking about the birth process and why that's massively important for the microbiome. So if you have any questions just ask us. I'm also in the west end of town now too, so if you go to drmarcodc.com, doctor spelled out, you'll see that um, I'm also in the west end as well, not only in the east end, so I'm available in two different places, in the east and the west, so check out drmarcodc.com. And if you have any questions, please share this video if it was helpful for you, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.